Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 64 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. This is a continuation of our discussion about pandas uh, for data handling and manipulation. And in the last five tutorials, we looked at how to clean up the data. And now let's actually start looking at how to uh, further clean it up or get the data ready for plotting and actually uh, look at a couple of plots. Now, uh, there are many libraries for plotting. Matplotlib.pyplot is probably the mother of all plotting because Pandas actually offers some plotting functionality, but that is uh, uh, completely dependent on Matplotlib or it uses Matplotlib in the back end. There is another plotting library called Seaborn and I'll devote uh, my next tutorial for Seaborn plotting, but that actually also gives gives you eye appealing plots, especially for scientific plotting, you may want to look into Seaborn. So let's uh, uh, jump into our spider IDE and look at the same data set we have been looking at for the past five tutorials. So I'll not spend too much time talking about the data set itself. Okay, so we're going to import pandas and we are going to read CSV and read this uh, file. Again, our data frame has seven columns and uh, 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 the, the one of the columns is called uh, set, you know, or unnamed, you have multiple sets in here, and uh, image number, and the manual column has numbers and some missing values, so we may have to fill that because for plotting that can be very important, otherwise you see this disconnects. And uh, let's go ahead and drop this manual two column because it's got all not in numbers over there. Okay, so that's initial cleanup and we talked about it already. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, plot, start plotting it. So first of all, what shall we plot, okay? Uh, let's actually look at the manual column within our data frame and plot a histogram of it because in the manual we have numbers uh, that actually go from 80 to 120 and then these are all the number of nuclei that we counted in a given image, okay? So this gives us an idea of how many images have like 80s and how many have like 100s and so on. So histogram plot, again, I hope I don't have to explain what histogram is. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, 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 plot it. And the way you do that is again, select the column dot plot and what kind of plot do you want? In this case, we want a histogram plot, okay? Go ahead and look at the uh, documentation, uh, Pandas documentation for plotting, but uh, this gives you a quick idea. And let's go ahead and add a title to it, calling manual count, and how many bins do we want to divide this histogram into? Let's just say 30. And then uh, what size uh, do you want for this figure? Let's do 12 by 10, so we can kind of see it in a nice way. Uh, on my spider, I selected uh, under my tools and preferences to do uh, do not do uh, inline plotting, which means it actually gives me the plots in a separate window up here. So, but in for yours, you may be seeing plots down here. Doesn't matter. Should convey the point. So let's go ahead and plot this. And if we switch to plots, there you go. So this is the plot we just uh, obtained of. Uh, the manual counts. Like I said, the values go from 80 to 120, and how many 80s? You know, apparently four images have uh, 80, and what gives, uh, looks like the highest frequency is for 105 nuclei. Eight images, have, uh, you know, show 105 nuclei. So that's a quick uh, plotting there. Now, uh, again, other tricks, if you just want to work with set one, right? I mean, here we have a whole bunch of images be, uh, because uh, we are looking at all images, set one, set two, set three, set four, each set has 25 images, so total of 100. What if we only want to work with one set? So let's delete uh, our variables and start here. Again, we are reading it and I'm renaming, this is something I do for all exercises from now on, rename my unnamed zero to image set and uh, uh, and then uh, now that we have renamed it, let's create a new data frame called set1 underscore df and populate it with the values coming from our original data frame where my image set is equal to a value of set1 or matches that, uh, that text, okay? So let's go ahead and run these lines and uh, look at set one. This is something that we have done already in the past tutorial, so, so hopefully you're comfortable with this. So we only have 25 of these and they're all corresponding to set one. Now, what shall we do? Let's just do a line plot, yeah? So uh, you just select what column you wanna plot. Let's plot manual, 
and then dot plot that's it okay so it's the plotting in uh plotting using the functionality that pandas provides is very simple and straightforward at the same time it's not very advanced so if you want to do advanced plotting you have to use some other uh, some other, uh, whether it is Seaborn or Plotly or something else, you know, you've got to use some other library. Okay, so there you go. So now let's go back to all sets because I want to show you how to do uh, like a running average. So let's go back to, again, go ahead and clean up and let's uh, import our data set and also rename or uh, like I said, this is something I do all the time rename the unnamed uh, column uh, what is it saying okay it cannot find my file because it's not there it's under my data let's go ahead and do this one more time okay and now let's go ahead and plot it now we are plotting it for all the day uh, not the histogram but line plot okay so now the plot should be bumpy you can see like image uh, number zero it has 90 and then the next image it has 105 again it's, it's it's fluctuating around a mean of 100 as you can see if you want to smooth it out again uh, this is again this is this is just some sort of a, a data to demonstrate the uh, plotting functionality but you probably have real scientific data that you would like to plot so please experiment with your data but I'm just showing you a couple of uh, uh, ways to plot here okay so now instead of just plotting let's add a couple of things in here uh, in between our manual and plot what are we adding okay go ahead and do rolling three take the three data sets and then do what with that three data sets you can do some you can do a couple of things but in this case let's do mean so this is a rolling average of three okay so this should be a bit smooth and there you go so that's the data uh, that's that's your smooth uh, right there okay uh, now uh, let's jump into uh, the statistics and uh, we already talked about statistics before when you do the describe just a second let me clean the screen again uh, sorry about this let's clean the screen and uh, there's a reason why we are doing this okay so uh, again these three are pretty much standard like what we have been doing again sorry for this I should have checked the code once before the video but fine uh, okay so there you go so we uh, are reading our uh, our csv file and we are renaming the column now let's actually do describe my manual column so when it describes it it's telling me what the mean is what the count total number of count we have 94 of them because six of those are, have no values right now let's go ahead and uh, do the plot here i mean uh, go ahead and plot this in a scatter way okay now go ahead and look at this plot okay what we are trying to do here is compare our manual with auto okay so plot our manual with auto and i'll get back to this i'll get back to this uh, uh describing the statistics part in a minute uh, we'll get to the part where we want to look at what the mean value is and anything above mean we'll call it high anything below mean we'll call it low okay I just I just did a couple of steps here so sorry about that slight detour but let's get back to our uh, plotting of scatter here between manual and auto uh, calculations here so again what are we plotting here we are plotting the number of uh, nuclei counted in a manual way versus one of the automated ways okay uh, why are we doing that well why do you plot to see if there is any correlation there seems to be some correlation between these two right whenever we calculate we found 100 uh, it automated way found uh, 80 or something okay and why is it finding less than what manual count is this is se uh, threshold setting number one here okay so intentionally over uh, under thresholding so we are picking up a few of these okay in any case you visually can see that there seems to be some sort of a relationship now you can go ahead and fit a straight line between these two if this were your real data okay now coming down to uh, the part where we want to do uh, separate this as low and high again let me go ahead and uh, clean things up and in the last tutorial we have used a lambda function to actually do some sort of a math with the columns now let's actually define a real function and then just apply to one of the columns and it's very very easy as you'll see in a minute okay let's do these three or four lines like we normally do again we are reading our data set and we are changing the column for unnamed zero to image set okay that part we nailed it and the next part next part i'm defining 
a function called cell count where it takes an input and then it returns either a value of low or, or high or a text of low or high. Okay, so if x is less than or equal to 100, y 100, that's why we did more describe, you know, the mean value seems to be 100. So I'm just saying, okay, 100 seems to be average. Anything that's above 100, I'm calling it high count. Below 100, I'm calling it low count, okay? So that's what this function does. Very little function, but in reality, in real life, you'll have advanced functions to manipulate your data. Okay, so now we want to send the entire manual column, right? I mean, we have this manual column. We want to send this through this uh, uh, function, or in other words, we want to apply this function to this manual column and add an additional column that either says low or high based on the value here, okay? That's our task now. So the way you do that is again, very simple, one simple line, df cell count index. Remember, we don't have any column called cell count index. So when you define something, uh, that means add that column to the existing data frame. That's what that means, okay? Add this column and fill with what? You can fill with a constant value, but that's not what we are trying to do. We are filling this with df manual where I apply this function. So when you apply this function to manual, it returns either a value of low or high. So that's what we are filling this with. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and run these lines of code and have a quick look at the first five uh, rows. As you can see, it added a new column and it's filling it with low, low, high, and uh, low and low, okay? So you have 104 counts there. So it's returning a high. Okay, so uh, now if you, want, uh, for, uh, if you want, you can export this new data frame into a CSV file. Again, we already looked at that in the last couple of tutorials. Now, let's, uh, uh, again, this is another way of looking at, okay, let's uh, look at 20 to 30 uh, rows and then see if uh, things make sense, okay? And all I'm trying to do here is, again, uh, 20 to 30. When you use look, it's looking at the rows, 20 to 30. And then what do you want to look at in terms of columns? If you don't provide anything, then you'll see everything. But I just want to look at these two columns. So that's what it's printing out here. By the way, instead of print, I could have uh, saved this into a new data frame if that means something to you. Okay, let's end this uh, tutorial by doing something interesting. Now that we separated this as low and high, let's do statistics for low and high. And a good way of doing that is using a box plot, right? I mean, you may have done box plot uh, before. A box plot, again, it shows you your mean and your, I think, 95th percentiles. And then uh, now I want to separate them by cell count index, which is low and high, which is this column. When you say by, it's Dividing this, if I have low, high, and medium, it shows three of these. Since I only have low and high, it shows two. Let's go ahead and look at it so it makes sense. Okay, now let's open the plot, and there you go. That's our box plot where it's showing me high and low. If you had medium, it would have added one more uh, here. So by is basically into how many uh, uh, into how many of these x axis, uh, you know. Uh, 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 how should I say, uh, uh, regions, you know, you would like to separate this. But anyway, so the high has a mean of about 105 to 10, I guess, like it looks like 107. And uh, you can see, uh, again, this is a typical box plot. And my low has a mean of uh, about 89 or so right there. Okay, so this, uh, I think, uh, covers at least the core components of uh, what pandas.plot actually offers. But like I mentioned, pandas.plot is fine if you want to do some of these. But if you want to add some uh, add some color, add some uh, visual appealing you know, to your plots or make certain plots uh, uh, easy, then Seaborn is a great library. And then again, I'll cover the basics of Seaborn in the next tutorial. So please stay tuned. Until then, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much.